guys, in this episode we're going to be talking about using Perg CSS to remove unused CSS classes to greatly shrink down your CSS for production. So this allows you to use something like Bootstrap or Tailwind and highly minify that down to only the classes that you're using in your app and ship that to production. This is really great. It saves a lot of download time um, when you are downloading CSS from your website in your production environment. So we're gonna use Tailwind as the example for this. We've set it up in a Rails app previously with Webpack and we're gonna go and add Purge CSS to that to minify it. And I would just wanna mention this, uh, in the controlling file size section of Tailwind's docs, they talk about the size of uh, several frameworks like Tailwind and Tailwind weighs in very large at 472 kilobytes. And we're gonna be able to shrink that down significantly using Purge CSS. The same will apply to Bootstrap if you use it through Webpack. And so that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. So let's first talk about how we go and install Purge CSS and configure it to run in our app. Um, we're gonna to need to run yarn add at full human post CSS purge, purge CSS. So we're using post CSS to go and compile the CSS through Webpack and then we're going to add a plugin called Purge CSS for post CSS. So I know that can be a little confusing, but that is exactly what we're doing here. Now we're gonna open up config or post CSS config.js. This is the file that you'll get um, as your main config. If you're using an older version of Webpacker, you can upgrade to the post CSS config.js file instead of the YAML file, and you'll be able to follow along from there. So here we have our post CSS config.js file, and we've got our Tailwind and Auto Prefixer set up as requires for that so that Tailwind can be run against your uh, CSS that you've written. So we've already set this up in a previous screencast, but from here, we actually need to add another plugin as purge CSS. Um, and configure that to make it run. But first, let's go compile our uh, CSS for this application using bin webpack. And we're gonna see the difference in the file output sizes here. Now, in development in Webpacker for Rails, we're gonna get all of our CSS written in JavaScript, which might seem a little strange, but it allows us to refresh that live um, whenever our files change. So we're gonna see a one megabyte file output here and let's go into another terminal and run this again after adding the purge CSS item in here. So we're gonna add at full human post CSS purge CSS and we're gonna pass in some options to its constructor. We're gonna add a content line. This is gonna be the paths to your um, files that actually reference the CSS classes. So in my case, we just have html.erb files that reference those classes, but you might also want to add in your helpers. For example, app helpers and anything in there with the .rb extension. You can go ahead and add JSX templates, view files, and all of those, and any other folders that you might want to reference CSS classes in them. Go ahead and add them to that line right now. Then we're going to add a default extractor line, and this is gonna take uh, some content that it gives us, <clears throat> and we're gonna look for a regex match here to match the uh, names of the classes from uh, Tailwind. So we will have zero through nine, A through Z, capital and lowercase, uh, hyphens, underscores, colons, and that should be that. Um, and then uh, we'll have plus, oops, square back at plus slash G, and then or and an empty array. Um, and so that's going to configure it to match the uh, Tailwind CSS class uh, syntax and purge those out for us. So if we've done everything correctly, we can run bin webpack and we should see that the output of this should be significantly smaller. Um, what I see here is that I get a third smaller size. So 361 kilobytes versus, um, 
where was the other logs here? One megabyte from before. So almost a third smaller, which is pretty fantastic. In both of these cases, they have compiled the CSS into the JavaScript file, so we don't see a .css file output here, which is okay. Um, but you can see that it is working because we have a significantly smaller file size. The other thing to do to test this out is to open up your browser to your application. And once that is booted, try and reference a CSS file or a CSS class that you haven't used before. So in my case, the navigation background is teal, but if we were to change this to something like background red of 500, we see that nothing happens and it doesn't match a CSS class or anything like that. And that is because we know for sure now that it has stripped out that class because we weren't using it when it compiled it um, last time. Now the problem is when you're in development, you're gonna be changing HTML constantly and you want these classes to be available. So what we actually need to do is modify what we have here and change it so that it only does this when we're compiling for production because production is not going to change very often, but in development we want the full Tailwind classes so we can go fiddle around with those as much as we like and then make our adjustments later. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab that line at the top and just change this to environment and say environment equals, and we'll set that to a variable and this is going to make it so that we can simply modify that variable only in production. So the way to check the Rails environment uh, environment variable is to say process.env.railsenv equals production. And we can then append that purge CSS line to our environment here. So we can say environment.plugins dot push and push in that require line right here and save that. So this is gonna make it so that we can have this pushed and let's maybe move this around a little bit so it looks a little better. But basically this is gonna make it so that we only enable uh, post CSS to run uh, purge CSS in the production environment. So this is not gonna affect our development anymore. And if we go back to our bin webpack, we can run this in development mode, and you will see that it should output one megabyte again. And if we were to run with Rails env equals production bin webpack, we will actually see separate CSS files because um, in production it compiles as separate ones. So our CSS file output in production is actually 11.8 kilobytes because we're barely using any of Tailwind's classes in this example app, but um, that is very, very small. If we were to go and disable this for production, we can run that one more time and see what that looks like as a separate CSS file for the production environment. And we see that it's 490 kilobytes. So we've saved like almost 480 kilobytes by turning on purge CSS for production. That's pretty amazing and makes a giant difference there. So we are getting a significantly improved uh, production file size by just turning on Purge CSS and telling it which files and folders to look at. This is probably something you want to do in development or definitely in staging. So make sure that you modify this to add staging in if that is the case that you have a staging environment because what you don't want to do is actually strip out classes that you were accidentally using and just missed. So if you have other files that add CSS classes, make sure that that folder is added to your content line here. Otherwise in production, you might just be missing CSS classes all over the place and that would be very bad. So keep that in mind. This is something you need to be aware of when you're working on your code. The other thing is that when you're writing helpers, you want to make sure that you write helpers that, um, so let's say class for post and you pass in a post and it looks to see if it's published or, you know, draft mode or something. And sometimes you might have, say, background of post.state and that could be published or draft. 
And then this would be generating background published and background uh, active or draft or whatever. Um, if you were doing it dynamically this way and generating your class names, post CSS uh, or purge CSS will not be able to find them. So you do not ever want to use this, even though it's helpful. You don't ever want to use that in your code because purge CSS is not going to actually grab those and it will strip them out because it can't find exact matches that way. It's not going to run your Ruby code or anything like that. It's just looking for exact matches in your uh, files that you run through. And so you need to have those exact lines in there to take advantage of purge CSS. It can't ever be that smart because that would be way too slow and probably impossible to do anyways. But the way that purge CSS works right now to find exact matches works extremely, extremely well. So keep that in mind. Um, and that is about the only other thing you have to worry about to add purge CSS to your application to greatly minify Bootstrap, Tailwind, Foundation, whatever you want to use, this can be extremely handy for all of those uh, frameworks. And even your own CSS code where you might have stuff that you're not using anymore, but that CSS got forgotten about and is still there, this will strip it out for production as well. So that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.